All right, welcome everyone. My name is Christopher Cata, and I'll be your host for this uh, webinar this evening. I wanted to uh, say thank you to Caregiving Matters for putting together this, uh, this webinar for us today. Um, we're joined by Sergeant Kerry Schmidt from the OPP, and he's going to talk to us today about uh, staying safe while out in the community. And what I'd like to do is let everyone know that um, there is a Q&A feature within Zoom. So if you do have questions throughout the presentation, feel free to type those questions in there. And when um, Sergeant uh, uh, Carey is completed, we'll um, read those questions out together and, um, and then he'll be able to answer them for everyone's listening. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Sergeant Carey Schmidt and his presentation. Awesome, thank you, Christopher. I hope everyone can hear me, see me. Uh, if you have uh, seen me in the past, or if you know kind of what I do, I work for the Ontario Provincial Police. I'm gonna get into a little bit of my history in a little bit, but I hope uh, we can have a really fun and engaging and thought-provoking conversation. Uh, I'm gonna be sharing uh, videos. Some of them could be upsetting. Some of them could be graphic in nature. And some of them, you know, obviously have uh, some pretty serious consequences involving um, collisions that resulted in death. Uh, so I just I want people to be aware of that. Uh, I'm going to kick it off here with a, a little video. I'm going to get back into kind of my role within the OPP. We're talking about being safe within the community. And my community is pretty much the roads, the highways, the streets and sidewalks, you know, anywhere where you're out in public and you're sharing the road, sharing the sidewalk with all sorts of different folks. And uh, I've been doing this job for about 21 years now with the OPP. I've done different things throughout my career, but before I get into my whole background, uh, we're gonna just start off here with uh, just a, a little video. Uh, I'll do a little disclaimer that uh, we're gonna talk with this video again in a few more, uh, in a few slides, but everyone came out okay. But when you see it, I think you will be somewhat surprised and somewhat shocked and uh, let's just take a look at it here. And, uh, and it's from a dash cam. And I'm telling you, we get all kinds of dash cams now from uh, the, the drivers out there when they see crazy things out on the roads. Uh, but just keep your eye on the oncoming lanes of the traffic. Don't look at the three lanes in front of the truck. Look at the traffic coming towards us. And uh, you'll see in a, pretty quickly what happens. So that's a pretty wild ride, I would say. And uh, hopefully you caught that. That's where the vehicle ended up. But when it came to its final rest, uh, there was one person in that vehicle. That person was taken to hospital and, uh, and it was a senior. And, uh, and they uh, made a full recovery, although it was quite the uh, ordeal for her. Uh, she was not aware of what actually took place. We're gonna talk about this in a second. But again, we're talking about... Uh, being safe in a community and if we're talking about a 65 plus uh, group and if there is a possibility for people to be joining on the chat uh, if someone wants to just test the chat right now i'd love someone just to say hello and uh, tell me that they're listening it listening and hearing and we're going to talk a little bit about some statistics that we have seen uh over the last 10 years involving drivers of uh of senior age 65 plus so uh James, hey, Christopher. Oh, hi, James. Uh, I got a couple of hellos there. That's awesome. So do you know what? I'm watching over here. I've got a whole pile of screens here. So if I'm looking a little uh, distracted in ADHD or whatever, I'm looking up at, at different screens. But let's let's talk about us. So let's talk about our drivers and our abilities, uh, whether that's you or someone you care for, someone you love. Uh, and uh, we're going to talk about some of the stats that we have seen. So in the past 10 years of 65 plus drivers, 22% uh, of all the fatalities that we investigated were uh, of, of that demographic, 65 plus. Now, numbers can say a lot of things. If any of you have a background in accounting, you can kind of make, a, make numbers say whatever you want. But uh, does 22% does of fatalities means that 22% 20, of the drivers are actually in that demographic? And this is a, a fair swath of everybody. So if there's 40% of people in their 40s, 30% uh, of people in their 30s, and a few others in their youth. You know, is that is that just a representation of the actual population of drivers out there? I don't know, but I'll tell you, 691 people 
of the 3,157 people who died in the last 10 years were seniors, 65 plus. Um, of those deaths, most of them were the drivers. So 68% of them were drivers, 20% of them were passengers, 11, sorry, there should be a percentage sign there, were pedestrians. So again, sometimes mobility may be an issue. You may not be in your vehicle. And, uh, and so 11% of them were the pedestrian that was hit by another vehicle. And, and in those situations, you know, it would likely be the fault of the other driver. Pedestrian has a right of way, depending where you're crossing. Hopefully you're crossing at a at a signalized area or where uh, you, you should be crossing. Uh, and 1%, a small number of people were uh, killed as a result of in being in their personal mobility device. If that's your wheelchair, your electric e-scooter, uh, or maybe you're driving around in your little Vespa um, e-bike as well. So uh, majority, two thirds were males, men, one third were females. Now, you know, we can talk about faults and crashes and numbers of statistics. Again, this is only numbers of uh, percentages where there were two or more vehicles involved. If it's a single vehicle collision, um, and we see that you know very often, losing control, slippery roads, wet roads, uh, maybe it's a medical condition that someone is involved in a collision and, and they suffer from trauma, and they die as a result of the collision, not as a result of the medical episode, fatigue, distraction. These are all the different characteristics that we see all the time. Now, I've got a lot of slides to get through, so I got to keep keep going here, and uh, and hopefully we can uh, you know get through as much as we can. But I'm looking forward to answering questions at the end of this as well. In some situations, there is just nothing that you can do to prevent and avoid a collision. The case in point, this was, uh, again, an older uh, gentleman that was operating his uh, GMC Yukon uh, in the wintertime. This is a couple of years back now, and he was hit by a flying truck wheel. And we've all heard about the flying truck wheels probably in the past. You know, and when they start bouncing towards you coming from an oncoming vehicle, transport truck or passenger vehicle, um, by the time you realize you're on a collision course with that wheel, you probably have nothing to do except for uh, try to comprehend what it is and you're along for the ride. And it is a pretty frightening situation. This gentleman was airlifted, but he died en route to hospital. You know, we see trauma and accidents and collisions, and I don't really call them accidents, but uh, you know, when we talk about accidents, we probably all recognize what this is. Uh, and this was uh, back in Saskatchewan a couple of years back, but the hockey team uh, was uh, wiped out by a transport truck, but it was no accident. And just a quick, couple of quick little definitions here, an accident, an event that is not planned or intended, an event that occurs by chance. So did, did this happen by chance or did this happen by something else? And uh, the next slide, most motor vehicle collisions are often predictable and preventable. And we know the history of between that driver and every other collision that we investigate. Therefore, they're not accidents at all. Um, so that's uh, one thing I want people to think about. You know, If you're engaged in a behavior that is putting yourself at risk or you're in a condition that's making you uh, vulnerable to not being able to react or adapt to the situation in front of you, uh, then it's something that we can expect will happen given the right circumstance at the right amount of time. It's not just an accident. It's something that we should have seen. And, and maybe there are times where, listen, we shouldn't be on the road either because of our, our physical condition or physical impairment, uh, our fatigue, or if we're not being able to focus on the task of driving uh, because we're distracted either by your cell phone or by any other uh, thing that's uh, uh, taking away your cognitive ability to uh, operate your vehicle or whatever machinery you're operating safely. I will, I do want to talk a little bit about some of the great things that ever, that seniors 65 pluses are, uh, are great at. And that's one thing that uh, we want to emulate you know across all demographics but of all these crashes 65 percent of all 87 percent of all the 65 plus drivers were wearing their seatbelts. thank you thank you thank you you grew up in a time and you remember that time when seatbelts were no were not actually part of the law and uh, I vaguely remember it. I remember being in my in my youth age when uh, I could sit on the floor sit on the back uh, uh, whatever you call it in the back uh, 
uh, sill behind the, the seats uh, in my parents' station wagon, or I'd sit up on the big uh, armrest and, and get a great view. But boy, I talk about being a projectile. So thank you for wearing your seatbelts. That has saved countless lives. And one life in particular is back to this one here again. And I want to show you this video, but this video also, it shows the video again, but it also goes into the reaction and you'll, you're going to meet the woman who was in this vehicle at the time. And if any of you are into uh, thrill rides, roller coasters, or <laughs> any types of activities, uh, this was quite the ride that uh, she went on. So let's just take a quick listen to her experience and her reaction when she saw this video for the first time. If you're watching this video, that's me, and I'm alive when I shouldn't be. Can I show you what I have here? Press play, Matt? and you just watch watch for the dirt first, because that's okay. the first thing that's going to draw your attention. Oh, that's me. <sighs> I rolled that far? Oh my God. And that is- I tumbled on that. See, so watch that. There's one, two, 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 three, four, five, six, seven. Oh and it keeps going. If you had not been, a seat, had been in a seatbelt, you would be a raggedy ad doll getting tossed into the sky and you would likely be dead. I can't believe that I'm still alive after that. Someone was looking over my shoulder. Yeah. Dead. So what do you think of when you see that video? Scared of my mind. There was debris all across the highway. Your <laughs> car... All my clothes were everywhere. <laughs> your car was in pieces. Oh. So I am just so grateful that you had your seatbelt on. Yeah, me too. You should use that as a video for kids. Well, why don't you look to this camera right here and say, I wore my seatbelt and it saved my life, and you should too. I wore my seatbelt and it saved my life, and you should too. If you're watching this video, that's me. And I'm alive. When I shouldn't be. So, that's the video. Quite the wild ride that she went on, and it really is unbelievable that uh, she survived that. But the only reason I would say is that she she uh, survived is because she was wearing her seatbelt, and uh, for that, uh, you know, <laughs> she can count her blessings. Now, I will talk about some of the things that we have done wrong, and some of those things when we look at those at fault collisions, of those um, the eighteen percent of the collisions that we investigated the driver the 65 plus driver was at fault and uh, so that's that's good it looks like a, a low number uh, but let's look at those numbers a little further to see what it is that they were doing that actually resulted in that incident in that collision uh, 26 of uh, those drivers failed to yield that was the highest category of all the, the contributing factors uh, some of the other ones improper turns improper lane changes following too close improper passing let me tell you, how, how many of you have been driving on the highway and uh, you've been frustrated by someone who did something that was completely inappropriate, they were completely oblivious, and maybe it was a young kid, a new driver, uh, a distracted driver, may have been a senior driver, it doesn't matter, but we've all seen those, those drivers out there that uh, are putting us, other road users at risk. And if you're in a motor vehicle, you have a better chance of surviving because you have that safety cage around you. If you're operating a mobility device, riding a bicycle, a motor, a motorcycle, or uh, you know an exposed vehicle, you have less uh, protection around you. And if you're a pedestrian, obviously you are that much more vulnerable. Uh, we've seen vehicles mount sidewalks. We've seen uh, transport trucks wipe out uh, people at an intersection when they make a big sweeping turn. Uh, you know, as a pedestrian, you are absolutely vulnerable in everything that uh, that happens around you. Now, I did a little bit of research as well, and and this this one this slide may not come over as a very positive or encouraging for drivers who want to continue to drive, even though uh, you know, they are getting on in their senior years, their, your golden years, and uh, you know we don't want to give up our mobility. And I I've talked to children of uh, senior drivers who have expressed concerns about their um, parent 
who probably shouldn't be driving. Maybe they're getting a little more forgetful. They're not quite aware of their surroundings, their mobility. They're not able to lane shoulder check when they do a lane change or making those turns. Uh, their vision may not be as strong as it used to be. Uh, and, and this is from the American Automobile Association. And, and the guess, I guess the good thing is we're living longer and stronger and, and uh, healthier. But um, you know, with that comes some, uh, some, some risks. And older Americans today are healthier. I, I'll read it for you just so we're all on the same page. The aging baby boomer generation is fastest growing demographic in the U.S. And by 2030, which is only a decade ago, away, there's, there'll be more than 70 million people aged 65 and older. And approximately 85 to 90 percent of them will be licensed to drive. That's a huge percentage. Um, in fact, seniors are outliving their ability to drive safely by an average of seven to 10 years. Uh, I want to know if you agree with that or not. And for the first time in history, they suggest that we should be planning for our driving retirement just as we plan for our financial retirement. So uh, if anyone's up on the chat, tell me if you uh, if you agree with that sentiment or if you disagree with it. I'd love to get some some interaction here. So please uh, keep uh, keep that chat going there. I'd love to hear some feedback as we're going through this presentation. I've got a few other uh, uh, slides here to talk about that. This all came from the AAA, CAA's uh, sister company down in the US. Um, another uh, quote there that they said was senior drivers are among the safest drivers on the road and often reduce their risk of injury by wearing safety belts, which is what we just finished talking about. Not drinking and driving and also by observing speed limits, which often we see far too many people uh, disobeying those. However, seniors are more likely to be injured or killed in a crash due to age-related fragility. And with the exception of teenagers, seniors have the highest crash death rate per mile driven. So that's something that we should really take a pretty sobering look at as we drive, as we age, our ability to drive safely is affected by natural changes to our bodies over time. So, um, so again, I, I'd love to hear if anyone wants to uh, uh, respond to that. Uh, and then we're going to get into a little bit of my story and what would I see out in the highways as well. Um, you know, of course, AAA is dedicated to keeping seniors driving for as long as safely possible. We also committed to provide promoting viable transportation options for seniors who can no longer drive independently. So again, there's options. Hey, I use Uber all the time uh, and other ride share services. Uh, you can get around public transit, all kinds of things. Uh, and you have people that uh, care for you and love you as well that want to uh, help you and get you around. Now, times have changed. And case in point, this is what my job or my role looked like not long ago, and you probably recognize maybe some of those fenders on some of those vehicles. Back in the day, a media officer with the OPP was a person standing in front of a microphone, uh, someone recording a video, a film, and then running back to the station, cutting it up into an episode or into a news segment and putting it on the six o'clock or the 11 o'clock news. And until 11 o'clock happened, no one knew it ever happened uh, because it wasn't on the news. Well, we're in a whole new world right now. And I'm sure uh, people that are active and out there are now scrums that I'm doing. This is a, one of my interviews that I did recently, you know, multiple cameras. But a lot of people, if you look closely at these pictures, you sure you got the big cameras uh, on the tripods uh, a little further back. But you also have those reporters and journalists right in my face holding microphones. And they're not just holding microphones, but this is what I see when I do an interview. And uh, you get swarmed by people and a lot of them are just you know, putting phones in your face and they're live streaming. They're recording off their phones, just like your phone, uh, your cell phone, and they can post that up on to a social media pages in an instant. Um, um, do you know what? Hey, do you, I love the chats. Uh, my family doc said he took away three licenses per week on average. You know, that's amazing. And I, I know doctors struggle with that because doctors want to keep that healthy relationship with their, their patients. And, and that's something, you know, I commend doctors who understand the greater good and the, in the public safety eyes when someone isn't in a position when they should be uh, driving. So thank you so much, uh, James, for putting that comment. Um, again, uh, here, you know, doing an interview, doing a scrum, going to the news, but we live in a world now that's not just the news, but it's going social. 
And I'd love to know if anyone out there is active on social media and what your platforms of choice are. Uh, are you a Facebooker? Are you a Twitter person? Maybe you're a TikToker already. Who knows? Uh, there's lots of options out there uh, for you to connect with your family, with your friends, to find out what's going on in the world, to hear what's going on in the world. And uh, in the social media is changing. And the biggest people, the biggest demographic increasing their social media content are those people 55 plus so that's again that's our your demographic your generation and uh, you're becoming more and more uh, connected online through social media platforms and and that's fantastic because you can learn a lot if i can impart one thing that i would want people to understand is to read and listen and learn and, and and receive perspectives from as many people as possible you're listening to me right now which i love and it's fantastic but there's a lot of perspectives out there and the more you learn the more you understand the more open you are to new and diverse ideas uh, you will be a, a more objective and under being able to understand and uh, discriminate into what you believe uh, is uh, is the right uh, avenue for you when you're making decisions uh, and you look at uh, and this is TikTok's rise and 50 plus years uh, again lower demographic but it's climbing it's climbing it's climbing and we're seeing more and more of that all the time you may be watching the news uh, on a regular basis on television or maybe you're watching or listening it listening to the news on your uh, on your phone who knows uh, but again uh, target audiences I'm telling you, the older demographic is getting more and more connected. This is a this is a chart of the CTV News here in Toronto, and uh, you can see the uh, the demographic about 200 to 300 thousand people watch any uh, six o'clock newscast on any given night, uh, and it's relatively consistent across the the the, the hour broadcast. But uh, this slide tells me who's actually watching. And when you look at the audiences at the bottom, it has audiences, uh, females 18 to 49, males 18 to 49, and they're 19 and 33% uh, average uh, uh, per thousand. But if you want to get the, the demographic, who's really watching? It's those females and males, the F and the M's, 55 plus. They're watching the news on television. So, uh, you know, that's where the highest demographic is of the senior audience. When you look at the other side, Facebook and so on, this is where you're getting the younger audience. But again, the senior audience is growing. So, you know, learn and, and get information from as many sources as you can. It'll help you to understand how you can be safe out on the roads as well. But uh, this is just a, a video of, of aggressive drivers. And we'll, I'll just, I'll, actually, I'll play it out here real quick and you'll see what, uh, what's going on. And if you look off of, on the left, there's a car in the HLB lane who bangs speed limit. And how many times have you been driving down the highway and someone comes up from behind you and if you uh, aren't able to move along the way, you're going to have someone up on your bumper pretty quickly like this car here is doing. They can't get around that driver. They're going to take you to something aggressive. They're going to cut through the HLB lane. But watch what happens after he actually makes that dangerous uh, movement. He forces him to make his way between it. And then he hits his brakes. See that right there? He cuts that car off and sends it spinning. Incredibly dangerous. Incredibly irresponsible. And uh, the driver who uh, was involved in that stopped. But again, incredibly dangerous i just you know want people to think about what's happening on the roads when they're driving look straight in front of this truck there's a car there that wants to exit but that car just made a lane change to the left he actually wants to exit or she actually wants to exit to the right and get about get around these trucks there's trucks lined up on the right lanes it's kind of hard to see in the distance here and they're getting closer and now she has to come back and she's wasted all this time and now she has to come slow all the way down and get right back over and merge over quickly across the bullnose. She didn't realize there was a concrete wall there. Making better decisions, understanding where you need to be on the highway is going to make your life a lot easier. This lady survived. It was a young driver, actually. Uh, didn't realize what was happening. But that is, again, one of those situations where drivers just need to pay attention. We see crazy, reckless drivers all the time. 
And if, if you blink, you're going to miss it. But if you look just to the left of this page here, uh, as this uh, truck drives by, you're going to see a little flash go by. And uh, keep your eyes open pretty quickly. There it goes. A little motorcycle weaving through lanes. It's frustrating for me. It's frustrating for anybody and for you. Unfortunately, that motorcyclist was dead about 30 seconds later when he got hit by a truck that was uh, right in front of his path. So again, it just comes down to making better decisions. One more video here. I want you to watch that red car that's just passing that transport truck ahead of this vehicle. That transport truck is not looking at the red car. That transport truck is looking at the cars that are merging uh, from this ramp lane. And he sees that car in front of him that just merged in front of him, not realizing this red car came up and passed him on the inside. He tapped it, went for a ride, lost control. Uh, the people in that red car survived, uh, no serious injuries. The driver in that transport truck also survived, but boy, did he make a mess. It was a scrap hauler transport truck loaded with scrap cars, and he spilt them all across the highway there. And you can see all that carnage on the other side of the highway. It was unbelievable. Just because he didn't check his mirrors. You know, we talk about shoulder checking, using your full uh, 360 degree awareness, you know what's happening in front of you, beside you, behind you. If you're changing lanes, you have to be absolutely clear and certain that your movement can be done safely. What was one of the leading causes of uh, injuries on our highways by those 65 pluses? Unsafe lane changes, improper passing. Those are the issues that, uh, again, it's not unique to just uh, senior drivers. Every driver needs to pay attention to that. You know, we can laugh at uh, drivers that make dumb, idiotic mistakes, and we see that all the time. You know, I'll just show you a few things that I've been doing here. Again, my job within the OPP has been media relations for the last almost six years now. And, uh, you know, I've seen quite a bit of uh, carnage, destruction. I was at a fatal, uh, fatal crash this morning where um, you know, a 56 year old man was killed. He was uh, driving along, going to work. He was hit head on by a 21 year old uh, driver. Don't know what happened, but he drifted right into his path of travel and lost control. Um, so, um, uh, oh, BLIS on my Volvo. Is that uh, blind? Uh, sorry, I don't know what BLIS stands for. Help me out there, uh, James. Um, so uh, here we have a guy in a street sweeper. He was drunk. He was driving impaired, operating a sweet street sweeper. The only thing that would be more Canadian would be if he was driving a Zamboni. It looks like a Zamboni, but it's a street sweeper. Anyways, that made the news here on the CBC. And we get all kinds of drivers, speeders, and other drivers that are going way too fast, 180, 160, and 185 kilometers per hour, 680 news. I see these kinds of behaviors, and officers see this all the time. And I'm sure you do too if you see it. 232 kilometers per hour. We stopped the guy last year going 308 kilometers per hour. Uh, Blind dose information system, a small light flashes on mirror when cars are passing. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, very good, thank you. Yeah, I know a lot of vehicles have that and, and that will certainly help you when you're in that uh, position. The light will come on and if you put your signal on, it'll probably start beeping at you as well, warning you don't make that lane change. So, you know, until we get to a position where we no longer need to be a driver and vehicles are autonomous, they're almost autonomous already. They're all, we have self-driving vehicles out in the roads already and, uh, you know, it won't be long before that's where we're going to be. Uh, but again, we continue to see people making very bad decisions and, um, and, and that results in issues. Big four, the leading causes of death and injury, distracted driving, impaired driving, uh, aggressive, uh, uh, distracted, impaired, and aggressive, and people not wearing their seatbelts. Those are the big four. Those are leading causes of death and injury. Case in point, this was an impaired driver. He was going the wrong way on the highway, hit a concrete wall, and the whole car actually, it was like a turtle. And the shell of the car stayed on top of the guardrail and the guts of the car, along with the driver, got pushed out the back. Uh, they were killed in this crash. Alcohol was a factor in this, in this situation. Again, I can't amplify that enough. We need people to make those decisions, make better decisions, uh, and going out there. Here, here's a little better picture of the vehicle as uh, it went into that uh, guardrail. He was going the wrong way on the highway, not aware of his surroundings. Uh, people didn't even think this was, was real, but uh, this is real. And, uh, and sadly, it claimed the life of a driver as we were uh, 
call to it. We were responding to this crash. And unfortunately, uh, he crashed before we could get, intercept him. And we've seen all sorts of uh, carnage out on the roads. You know, this one was a big wreck we had on the Highway 400. Uh, multiple uh, vehicles involved. Three people died in this fiery fireball wreck. And uh, it really was one of the worst crashes that I've ever seen. And CNN actually did a story on it, uh, along with many other people as well. But when you see fireballs oh like this God. going down the highway, this is what happens on the roads. And I'll show you a few pictures here in a second. But uh, this was all, it happened Halloween night, uh, a few years ago now. And it, uh, it was unbelievable to see that happening. And it all happened because of a distracted or an inattentive driver, not realizing the traffic was slowing down. There was a queuing of traffic that was coming up. And as the transport truck collided, it's something I think probably the, one of the worst crashes I've ever seen in terms of I was really tired when I said that because I've been going all night. <laughs> and and uh, when that mm -hmm. happened, uh, this driver slammed in the back of stop traffic. So if ever you have to slow down uh, because of traffic jams, look in your mirror. And if there's a if there's a car roaring down on you, you better brace for impact or get out of the way. And hopefully you have an escape route because this is the first vehicle that was killed that was involved. The driver was killed in this collision. There was a massive fire that consumed these vehicles. Vehicles made of steel looked like that, and that vehicles made of aluminum looked like this, and that, and they melt because of the extreme temperatures. And there were lives lost in that uh, crash. So. You know, this is th these are just images that officers that we have to deal with. And, you know, as a driver out on the roads, regardless of your age, being aware of your surroundings, having your full attention on the task of driving, your hands on the wheel, your eyes on the road and um, and your mind thinking about what's happening is so critically important uh, because this was a massive cleanup and fortunately uh, there weren't more lives lost and unfortunately three lives were lost and um, you know it really is is unfortunate that we continue to have to deal with these kinds of uh, outcomes out on the roads we are depending on everyone of all ages and all skill levels of all vehicle sizes to share the roads and if you're a vulnerable road user a pedestrian, a bicyclist, motorcyclist, uh, you need to be extra careful because even if you're not at fault and you're involved in a collision, you're the one who's going to pay the price and likely uh, bear the brunt of the injuries uh, because you don't have that protection of a safety cage. Bigger vehicles often have more potential to uh, uh, protect the occupants inside. Uh, but when fire is involved and large vehicles are involved, you're going to get all the, the the troops to show up to assist but unfortunately these all resulted in in massive fatalities families wiped out because of drivers not paying attention i i need and we need people to drive in a way that is appropriate and uh, again you need to consider your abilities as well if you think uh that uh you struggle with vision, with mobility, with awareness, with reaction times. Um, that's something that maybe you should have a really heart-to-heart -heart discussion with your loved ones and, and even your doctor to say, where am I in terms of my, my ability to operate a vehicle safely? You can save a lot of money by taking other options and putting yourself in a much better position without putting the liability on you to, uh, to drive in a manner that could cause problems. And, uh, you know, I'd love to chat. I know time just flies quickly, so I'm not sure how much time we want to keep going here, but uh, I can keep going on with stories. I've been doing this job now for 21 years. I've seen so much. And, you know, I just came from a fatal crash scene on Highway 9. I was up on the 401 this afternoon uh, coming across all different kinds of fender benders. Some of them result in injuries. Some of them result in property damage, uh, but they all result in frustrated motorists stuck in traffic. So, uh, I'd love to hear your feedback, your comments, and, um, uh, you know, <laughs> tanker truck on the 401. I remember that one as well. That's quite a few years ago. But uh, Christopher, how are you doing? How are we doing for time? And did we get any, uh, any uh, feedback here? What do we got for people uh, talking about uh, our world? Yeah, no, we're good. We've, we've got some time. So if anyone does have any other additional questions for Carrie, please do uh, let us know. Uh, if you do want to say something, I can unmute you. Um, you just have to let me know. You can raise your hand in Zoom or um, or just post that in in the chat. Uh, but Carrie, I if you if you could summarize for everyone, 
you know, the, 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 the top two or three things that they can do or be, a, you know, pay attention to while driving to stay safe. Um, that, that would be amazing. Yeah. Do you know what? And, and so it's funny when I look at our stats, again, we'll go back to the beginning of our uh, discussion here when I was talking about what we've seen in the past and what drivers outside of the big four are mostly involved in crashes. And that was those, uh, those drivers that are uh, failing to yield unsafe turns, unsafe lane changes, following too close, uh, improper passing. Those were the issues that we saw over and over again uh, in the 65 plus demographic. Now that could also be included in the other drivers of other demographics as well. But I took a snapshot, I collected all the statistics and that's where the 3,100 people who died. So we get about 300 and between 300 and 325 people dying every single year on provincial roads at the OPP police. And, um, and again, of those numbers that we saw, uh, what was it that uh, 80, uh, 800 and some odd or 691 of those drivers were 65 plus. And again, you know, there may be fewer drivers out there in that demographic. Uh, there may be more drivers in the 35 to 55, just because of the population. But uh, when 22% of all fatalities involved uh, seniors 65 plus and uh, we look at those causal factors that were again completely preventable collisions uh, don't happen by chance mm -hmm. they happen because of uh, conditions that uh, are likely predictable when you see someone's behavior or actions not being uh, you know consistent with what we would expect to be on the highway so yep. you need to have that awareness and uh, please uh, Use your, uh, use your eyes looking way down the highway, looking to the horizon, looking through the vehicle in front of you to see what's happening to the vehicle in front of it. So you can anticipate uh, it changing in traffic patterns and, and being ready to slow down and, and change lanes or slow down or stop if necessary, because um, we know how quickly traffic can change, right? Yep. Uh, we do have one question from Bob. Uh, first off, Bob says, what a fantastic presentation. Thank you. Um, Bob says, how can older adults who are driving at night and for too long um, do what they are doing? So how, how do they manage to drive and stay safe while they're driving long at night? Is that a shameless PSA here? <laughs> 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 Sorry. No, that, that's not the answer. Don't, don't use that as the answer. Um, do you know what? Hey, listen, I get tired. I get fatigued. My vision in my eyes, they get tired. And all of a sudden, seeing piercing headlights coming at me i can't even tell where they are and they start radiating around and, and if you're not in that physical condition to be out there at night um you know sure you can wear all kinds of glasses and different things that'll help you with night vision and having the proper uh, headlights showing your way but again it comes down to your cognitive ability to understand what the conditions are in front of you um you know people talk about turning up the radio opening up the windows, you know, if you're tired and, and you're having trouble staying in, in your lane, your body is shutting down. You are, your body is telling you, it's, it's, it's yelling at you to, to stop. Let me close my eyes and sleep. Uh, but yet instead of giving it calm and peace, we just bombard it with wind and noise and radios and, and temperatures. You know, that, all that does is overload our system as well. When our body is telling us something, we need to listen. And if it's telling us to stop, that's why there's on routes and service centers and rest stops and, and areas. Stop someplace. Don't push it. You know, we always think, wow, it's only going to be another 15, 20 minutes and I'll get home to my own bed. But in those 15, 20 minutes, that's where the proportion, the risk factors skyrocket. The chances of you being involved in a collision on that last short leg of getting home uh, is so much greater than when you're fresh and alert and, and reactive earlier on on your journey. So it really is listening to your body. Um, you know, we've, you know, I get, I'll talk about if we're all 65 plus, we've had six decades to, to understand who we are as a person and how we can uh, be uh, in tune with what our body's telling us. And if our body's telling us something's wrong, it's very wrong. And we don't want to push our chances. So I hope that helps. I don't, I don't know if that answers the question completely, yeah. but um, <laughs> you know, there's no fail safe quick method uh, that's uh, going to also change the switch. And, you know, a cup of coffee may help you, but it's uh, when your body's tired, it's tired and it needs rest. Yeah. 
Good point. I, I do have one one other question for you. Um, that given that we're you know we've been going through eighteen months of of lockdown and, and pandemic and things like that, I personally have noticed. Um, obviously, um, last year there was certainly fewer people on the highway because no one was you know there were far fewer people driving to work. But as as the months rolled by, I seem to notice that there were two two different kinds of drivers on the road. There were far more aggressive drivers. So, you know, a lot more speeding, 120, 130, yes. even higher on a regular basis, but also more vehicles driving at, at the speed limit or just under. So I, I was noticing a huge speed differential, yeah. much more faster drivers and more slower drivers, which for me, who typically drives maybe 110, maybe 120, um, mm -hmm. I was noticing that I was getting, you know, like passed a lot, but then also passing slower drivers and was, it was a lot more chaotic. And I'm wondering if that is something that you've been seeing as a trend that's actually happening and, and what people can do to stay safe around that kind of ch uh, changing traffic pattern that we're seeing now. Yeah, well, we certainly saw a lot of high risk, aggressive speeding drivers uh, early on in the pandemic when all of a sudden the highways were empty. We used to never get speeders at three in the afternoon on the 401 through Toronto because it was gridlock. Uh, now, a year ago, all of a sudden, three in the afternoon, the highways were wide open and we're getting drivers doing 160, 170, 180 kilometers per hour beside transport trucks that are doing 100 or 105 and other drivers that are going 80 or 90. You may, people often think that the 401 uh, is, is always 120, 130 plus only and there's no one going less than that. There's a lot of people going a lot less than that. And there's a lot of speed differential. I wanted, uh, one thing I really want to tell and, and connect with drivers is lane discipline. It's one of my biggest pet peeves that I see out on the roads. It causes all kinds of road rage. If you are driving along at 100 kilometers per hour, 105 or 115, I don't care how fast you're going, and you're in the far left lane and a car passes you to the right, you're in the wrong lane. You need to move over. When there's a car behind you and they're tailgating you, yes, they need to back off and not follow too closely, but they're probably telling you that they want to pass. And I get so many drivers that want to stay in that left lane because they, they feel that that's the best place for them because they don't have to focus on moving traffic. Traffic lanes, cars that are merging from the highways are coming off. The transport trucks are in the right lanes. If you're in the left lane, you are impeding traffic and now you're going to see aggressive drivers passing you on the inside i need everyone if you are not passing somebody you need to move over to the right the left lane is for passing passing only and uh, the right lanes are for driving driving is an active task it requires your full participation your full involvement and uh, you can't just sit down on cruise control Put it on um, cruise at 120 and think that you can just drive in the left lane all day long because you're going to have a train of cars behind you getting frustrated, following too close, and uh, you're going to see cars weaving through traffic. And you probably think, well, look at that guy weaving through traffic, driving like an idiot. Uh, and yes, he probably is driving like an idiot. But let's look at the root cause of why he's driving like an idiot. It may be because there's someone else who's also driving the way they shouldn't be in that left lane impeding traffic there's unnecessary slow driving which you can be charged with uh careless driving um interfere with traffic uh fail to turn out to right when being overtaken these are all offenses within the highway traffic act that drivers should pay attention to so uh if i could ask people to uh, be aware of your surroundings you're not just looking forward you're looking in your mirrors every five ten seconds to see what's behind you if there's a car behind you and there's no car in front of you you got to move over. Excellent points. Thank you so much, Kerry. This was fantastic. Um, once again, thank you for, for doing this presentation. Um, the, everyone, you know, the, the questions we got were great. I want to remind everyone that um, we did record the session, so it's going to be available afterwards on the Caregiving Matters website, and we'll be sending out an email for everyone to, to get that link. And uh, I will remind everyone there are additional um, presentations coming up over the next few months. Uh, please do visit the Caregiving Matters website to register for those. And we hope to see you on the next one. Thank you so much, Carrie. Amazing. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. You're welcome. All right. Stay safe, everyone. All right. Bye.